going to say to you all day. And I was fine until I got on here and heard Larry's voice. And then, I don't know, these butterflies just jumped up in my stomach in my head. But I'm going to proceed anyway and see what we can draw out of this this evening. I pray that you're all well. And, and I, I must admit, we, yes, last night we participated in a similar call on one of our brothers who passed from the virus. And I just found it to be an arousing activity because it gave us an opportunity for those who know him and those who didn't to get to know him even better in his passing. And I think that was a good thing. You know, we come to find out about the, a lot about a man when you have so many people who express their thoughts, their feelings, and what they saw in the brother. And that was just a wonderful experience. So, but one of the things that I do want to say on that note is I have to, one, I want to encourage the brothers that if somebody gets sick, at that moment when you are sick, let us know. I believe in the power of prayer. And I think it's at that very moment, prayer should be started on your behalf. I don't know if it's because of the virus, some people don't want us to know or what their situation is, but I think I'd rather know when you find out versus when you have to face the fact that it has overtaken you. The interesting thing about it overtaking you, it overtakes us all. It just pulls something out of each of us each time we hear, hear of a death to this virus. So that's just the reality. So. Let us, let us talk about a few things. I want to change our perception on a couple of things and so that we just have a clear understanding. In the, lately, we've been hearing about Second Chronicles 7.14. It talks about, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their ways, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. That is an interesting voice because it's, it's probably one of the best known and most loved in all of Chronicles. It expresses the stipulations that, uh, that would God lays down for a nation to experience his blessing, whether that nation be Solomon's, Israel, or our own. Those who have been chosen to be his people must cease from their sins, turn from living lives of, of proud self-centeredness, pray to the Lord, and yield their desires to his word and his will. Then, and only then, will he grant heaven sent revival. We're seeking a revival at this time. We're seeking to come out of where we're at into a new place. And the only way we can get there is through a number of steps. There's just some things we will have to do to overcome this virus. We have to first change our understanding of death. Last week when we heard about the death, we heard also the depression that everybody felt with this death, the loss that they felt. And we, I had to stop and think about it. Is it our loss or heaven's gain? Or the person who's dying, is it their gain? Is it their blessing? We, we looked at as death as such a down feeling is be, mainly because we're gonna lose somebody. But I remember when my mother was dying and I was going through that whole experience the social worker at the hospital said to me, as I watched her suffer, that maybe I needed to release her. Maybe I needed to say to her that it's okay to move on. And when I had to think about it, I thought about it from the perspective, my mother was a Christian. My mother was a Christian to the point that it drove me to come and seek out and to identify with being a Christian man. And, and I remember when I said that to her, you know, I said to her, it's okay, mom we will be all right, you can move on. But I had to stop and, and I had to remember, she would always tell me about Jeremiah 29, 11, if you only knew the plans I have for you, if you only knew the plans I have for you, nothing but good, nothing but good. And then, and then she would always come and tell me that Jesus went to prepare a place for her. In this father's house, there are many mansions. And so when I stop and I think about that, she rested her life on these verses, this understanding with Jesus Christ, then she was really ready to go. She was prepared to go. 
It would gave me the impression that all the time she was preparing to go. Each step of her Christian walk was a preparation for what's to come next. Then the other reality that we do have is that God has promised us everlasting life. The truth is we don't know what the next phase is. When we leave here, we don't know what's the next phase or what we're going to be experiencing in that phase. We learn that we arrive in level and in stages. We're at this level. We're, we're developing through this stage. We don't know the next level. We don't know how many levels there is the next. We don't know what the eternal life is. To the, that extent, we might be going to level to level to level. This might be a journey that will rock every single one of us. But the reality, so now when we stop and we look at it from that perspective, then what are we supposed to be doing now? So it gets to understand that we're supposed to be preparing for the next level. And so when I stop and think about my mother, all the time she was preparing for the next level. And I had to come to understand her moving on, she was going to be blessed far beyond me because she's now going to get the opportunity to see what that level is going to be. When I'm going to have to stay here and continue to guess. And sometimes I'm unfortunate because she wasn't able to come back and tell me this is what the next level is going to be like. I wish she could have, I wish she would have, I wish she should have, but she can't come back and tell me, but I can bless her on and I could pray and I and <laughs> meet her with her expectations is that everything that she was going to face, face is good. So each person who's going to leave at you too, due to this virus, everything they're going to face is good. Why? Because God is good. Why? Because the plans that he has for us, we may not see those plans on this side. I'm sure we will see all of his plans. And like I said, his plans for us, because we don't know what they are, may take a lifetime to present. Well, two lifetimes, maybe even three lifetimes. It takes a journey, I would believe, so that we can wind up in the place where we can be blessed by everything he has to offer us. And so we thank him for that. We, we thank him for that. So now, what are we supposed to be doing here? If we have that much of a problem with debt, then we should be here preparing the living to deal in the next phase. We all need to take on 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 Matthew 28, 18. Baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them everything I have, or teach them to obey everything I have shared or I have taught, I have given, I have blessed you with. And I think that's what we should be doing. And not only doing that, but we should be doing it in a manner that we encourage them to do the same thing. Yesterday, somebody, a friend of mine, a matter of fact, Phil, was mentioning, mentioning a co-worker who he's been talking to over a period of time about Christianity. And one of her relatives just died. And his question was, how do I go back and now tell her about Jesus Christ, about God? And here's how people's dead. But do it is a reality. Anytime you fall into that situation, you come to learn that you go and you speak to them about the relationship you have with God, the relationship you have with Jesus Christ. Because that's what keeps us to survive, the relationship that we have with God. You talk about it from where it has benefited you. There's a reality. Before I really came to stop and understand Christianity and working in men's ministry, I didn't know I was supposed to have a relationship with God. So I operated from what I didn't know. And the minute that I found out that I, I'm supposed to have a relationship with God and the interesting part, part, I can cultivate that relationship. I can give input to the relationship. I can make it the best or the worst relationship that I choose to make. I could be blessed. And when I understood that, then that's what I commenced to do. And so we need to share with people our relationship. And those of us who some of us have strong relationships. Some of us have mediocre relationships. Some of us have weak relationships. And so the question is, what can we do during this time, this period, to improve our relationship with Jesus Christ, with God, with heaven, with the Holy Spirit, with the next journey, wherever we're going, what's the next phase? But the biggest thing, the most important thing, to please God, to please God. And, and I think that there's some things that we can do. And so I'm going to share those things with you. 
if we're going to overcome this virus, there's 10 things that we can do. And it's not like we don't know it because we have done most of it before, but I'm going to share those 10 things with you. Mm. I think first of all, the first place we have to start is we have to give thanks. We have to give thanks to where we're at. We have to give thanks for the blessings that God has given us. We have to give thanks for the fact of salvation. The fact that we have, be, that we have been delivered from what we really didn't want to, or our just do. We've been delivered from our just do. And so we walk as a blessed people on the path of entering into the kingdom of, of being, living in the kingdom of God and entering into eternity. So we have to give thanks for that. But the other piece of it, we have to give thanks for just the little things. There's the reality if you start on a list of papers and write down everything, that, every reason or every thing that you have to be thankful for, you won't run out of paper. You may run out of writing, but you, because the list will three, be three, four pages long. Every little thing to be blessed with. You know, I stop and think that when you decide that you have to look at what you be, that what you have to be blessed with, then you start to look at rediscovering what God has blessed you with at this time. You take a, you take a look at your wife and you rediscover who she is. We're doing a class on Saturday, uh, men in their marriage, and and it's a fulfilling class because we're discovering our failures where we can grow stronger, how we can transition into the husbands that they really are seeking. And so it comes to be a blessing when we stop and look at just the information we receive today that we, we have the opportunity to receive. I stop and look at the information we receive. My father didn't have this information because I believe if he, if he would have had it, he would have passed it on to me. But he didn't have this information. So well, we're fortunate creatures to have this information and even more so, the ability to pass it on to somebody else. So be thankful, be thankful, be thankful for everything that, that, that God is blessing you with. The next thing is be committed, make a commitment to read, to study his word. It says, seek his face, make a commitment to read and study the scriptures. I think you will find it to be a blessing unto you and you will begin to be a blessing unto so many other people because you will transition from, from, from just from reading it, just from understanding it, from taking the time to experience that word. Let the words jump off of the pages into your heart so where you can commence to function from. The next thing is commit to prayer. Commit to prayer. During this time, I've come to learn that I have to myself commit to prayer more than I've ever. I have to stop and take the time to pray in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Every incident, every time someone calls me up, I've been in more prayer conference calls than a little bit. But I'm, the good thing, I'm getting used to praying. I, I can't say I've been the deepest or the best or the consistent prayer, prayer warrior in the world. I haven't. But I can snatch onto the tail of, of, or the hem of his garment and be dragged along and be committed to praying. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. The interesting thing about prayer and why you're praying, stop and take a time and, to listen. Hear what you're praying for. Hear what you're saying. Hear who you're talking to. There's a message every single time. The next thing, we talked about this earlier, is to obey. Obey what you learn. Obey what you pray for. More or less, we talked about it before, be holy. And if you don't know the definition of be holy, ask us. We'll give it to you. But be holy. The other thing is worship. Stop and take the time to worship. Yesterday, Sunday, I got the impression that my wife and I worshiped all day long. I listened to a number of sermons, but I also, the interesting thing, you can go to YouTube, put one gospel song in there, and right after one song comes another, comes another, comes another. And so we just worshiped all day long, and <laughs> our house was at peace. Thank you, Lord. Our house is at peace. Even I felt 
different. I felt better. I kissed her a number of times. Thank you, Lord. You know, just from worshiping. The next thing is giving. Now, I, I, I think I pay tithes more now than I've ever paid, paid before. You know, my wife, every, every Sunday, I, did you pay the tithes? Did you pay the tithes? Did you pay this? Did you do this? We pay the tithes because just the fact that you stop and you look at our involvement with the church today, and it has to continue to function. It has to continue to be a blessing to other people. So we're really giving into a blessing. Giving and hmm. storing up blessings. Amen. Next thing is forgiveness. Now forgiveness, and I stop and take the time because in our lives, some people have done some things that it's just hard to forgive for, to forgive people for. But I had an experience yesterday. I had a conversation with a brother and he expressed his forgiveness. But it's just the fact that he wanted to step up and forgive the individual for what they did to him. I found that to be extra, extra extraordinary. And, and it just tells me I need to pray more so I can forgive anyone who I think might have injured me or might have hurt my little feelings. But forgiveness. You know, there's a reality, and I stop and I think about it. If God has forgiven me, finally, and I know the sins I've committed, I know the depths of my sins. If he has forgiven me, if Jesus Christ can stand, should be on the cross and say, for God, the Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, and, get, and forgive them, then I can stop him to forgive the little petty things that is holding me back from taking that courageous act called forgiveness. The next thing is fellowship. Fellowship. Be faithful in the Lord. I, I, I'm, I'm hooked up to, I don't know how many, I have to go count them, how many um, message tracks uh, on, my, on my phone. But I, every time I look around, I'm picking up the phone. Fellowshipping with, with the brothers, fellowshipping with the brothers and their wives, fellowshipping with marriage ministry, fellowshipping. And you want to know something? I, I've come to realize this is, time, this is a time where fellowship is very important just because of the mere fact that we can interact, that I can come outside of myself. Yesterday, all of the fellowshipping that I did in the different churches, that sites that I went to, at the end of the day, I was tired because I felt I was outside. And I haven't left my house in God knows how long. But I felt I was traveling. That I had a great experience that day. I have a great experience every time I fellowship with you gentlemen. Except for Larry. <laughs> the next is serving. Serving. Serve. 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 Mm. You have to be creative, especially today with your serving. Just the fact of calling a senior citizen up and saying, are you okay? Or not even a senior citizen, anyone that you know. Stop. Put, this, put on the spirit of Jesus Christ and call someone and say, are you, you well? Are you fine? Are you okay? Checking on them. You know, if you know somebody who needs some help to doing something, Help them do it. There's a, there's, a, hmm. there's a couple of people. Uh, okay, you better yet. My grandson comes and says I'm going to go shopping for you, Grandpa. In that process, he winds up shopping for two or three other individuals at the same time. Because this is an extension of just service, of blessing someone else with, 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 with an opportunity or a situation that they need to be blessed in. The next thing is values. What do you value? I've come to understand that the thing that I really, really value is all of the relationships that I have. Relationship with God, relationship with Jesus Christ, relationship with pastor, 
relationship with you gentlemen. We joke, we play, but we have a relationship and I believe it's a strong relationship. I believe that is the relationship that can overcome anything that the devil may have to throw this way. I found them to be very important. I think that they define the importance and our value, not only in the relationship, but in the world. So what is it that you value? How much, how much value do you place on your relationships? Do you call your prayer partner? Are you a brother keeper? Are you a friend? And the last one is share your resources. Your, mm, I look at that when it says share your resources. I'm looking at sharing what God has blessed me with with someone else who needs a blessing. When my wife and I, we've, like I said, we've gone shopping for other people because either they have or they don't have, but just because God has blessed us with the resources of being able to do that, so we're sharing that resource. The other thing that when we talk about resources, we get a lot of email and texts and this information and that information. And I spend a lot of time sharing that information. So that's resource. It's resource so that an individual can be productive to get up and get accomplished whatever it is that God has for them to do. And so you're blessing, you're blessing them with that. But there's the reality. When we stop and we look at preparation or assisting people to go to the next phase, to go to the next level, then we have to equip ourselves to go to the next level. And so then I have to speak to everyone who's on here is that you have to become active in ICD. So ICB can take on that challenge of we train men in Christ likeness. We talked about I come last week. I mentioned that we we're going to be doing a group for brothers who have already pledged to ICB, and we had to think about what we're going to call this group. And I figured it out. We're going to call this group Rediscovery. We're going to work on individuals rediscovering the relationship with Jesus Christ. They're going to go back and look at their vision papers and see how they accomplished what God has led them to when they wrote the vision paper. Or maybe they have to rewrite a new vision paper. Maybe they have to stop and say, okay, I'm told I'm supposed to go to China and express the kingdom of God in China. I don't know. But to help them rediscover that new paper, a new relationship with, with Christ. I think the other thing, you have to rediscover your relationship with your wife. As I told you, we have this, this, this group on Saturday where we're, we're studying a man and his marriage. In the past two weeks, each time when we finish the study, we've been dumbfound or we've been in deep thought about what it is that we haven't done, didn't do, what we can do better, what we need to do. We're being honest and blunt with ourselves on how to be better husbands. So we're rediscovering that. We're rediscovering our relationship with our prayer call. What we study together and what we pray about. We're rediscovering our relationship with prayer and who it should be directed to. We're rediscovering our emphasis on healing and what does it mean to help someone be healed? rediscovering on overcoming on how to overcome this whole situation god has offered us an experience for us to rediscover our relationship and his purpose in us on this earth and what we need to do hmm. and what else are we going to study i don't know but i'm sure you will tell us because God is going to set a fire, a light in you saying, I need or we need to study this, to look at this, to explore that. But even more so, that you be a contributing factor to all that we study, all that we do. I believe that God is setting us up, not just to be people on the sidelines, but to be men who get involved, to be men who's functioning. 
men that other men could look at and say, I can appreciate the steps that I'm taking with you. So we want you, every single one of you to be involved so we can appreciate the steps that we're taking with you. And you can appreciate the steps that you're taking with us. So there's the truth. God sets us up for a beginning of something new. You being on this call, you, every week is the beginning of something new on what's to come tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. So all I can say to you, let's continue to look at God and to be blessed by everything that he has for us. And let us walk in that path called manhood. Thank you. Be blessed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Give give uh, our brother Simon a hand and Hallelujah. praise God for his message to you, brothers. Amen. 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 And brothers, just so you know, if you haven't noticed, I have put notes in the uh, chat in the chat section. So in case you missed any of the points, and I think I did mess one up, Simon. So you said that there were. 10 points, but I came up with 11. So brothers, I guess you're going to have to figure that out and work that out yourselves. <laughs> um, but, but thank you for such a, such a powerful word. I think quite often we don't always know to do what to do with the situation that we're in, you know, and I think Simon has given us some really good points to consider as we go through our season. And this has indeed been a season of challenge, a season of grieving, a season of, of fatigue and weariness. But the blessing for us all is that there are th still things that we can do. Amen? Amen. That, that Amen. there are still things that we are not a people without help. We are not a people without resources. And, and we still have things to do. If you are here, if you can inhale, exhale, if your heart is beating and you've got work to do, you still have things to do. God is not done with you yet. And so I thank God. I just want to give a special shout out to one of our guests. I'm going to put you guys on mute again and let him bring greetings. Uh, and I'm going to give him and say what's up to my brother, John Craig. How are you, sir? I am well. I am well, Rod. And, Good to you see know, you. You, you. You have the floor if you want to bring greetings to these men here. And just, uh, I know John. John is the executive director of Long Island Youth, Men Youth Mentoring. And I serve on the board there with John. He, he delivers a dynamic, powerful message each month uh, that we meet. And he also will be joining us here on Mondays. And, and we just look forward to having you, John. Well, I thank you much. Um, I have gone to several of your um, ceremonies where the moving up ceremonies, I, I don't even remember what they're called, but uh, I have been uh, touched to tears a couple times, not by you guys, but by your ladies, uh, as your ladies share what they have seen in your lives. And um, I got to tell you, that is, that is some real stuff right there. And and um, I think that's what ministry is all about. I've been um, really taken back by uh, working at home and dealing with all the things that uh, this time of uh, what people call crisis has brought. And uh, I remember this, um, this time when I lived in Spokane, Washington, where Mount St. Helen went off. And uh, when Mount St. Helen blew, uh, the whole city of Spokane, Washington was covered with ash. Uh, the supermarkets were cleaned out of food. Uh, cars couldn't drive because uh, you couldn't get air filters and uh, because the ash was clogging up the air filters and seas and engines and people had to wear masks and uh, you were told you had to clean that stuff off your property and your roof in a certain amount of time. And it was a crisis. And, uh, and so I remember I was a young man. I was, I was just uh, 23 years old. I had been married for four months. And I was trying to figure out what was going on and what should I be doing. And, you know, if you went back uh, to Spokane now and you went to Mount St. Helen now, you'll find that uh, all these, um, 
when that when that volcano blew, it knocked down 13 square miles of pine trees, like those like those trees were twigs. But if you go back there now, there's two brand new lakes that God created. When I when my wife and I were sitting around trying to figure out what we're going to do and what's going on, God created two new lakes. One called mm -hmm. Cold Water Lake. It's 60 feet deep, right outside the mountain and um, and you have to get a license to go fish that lake because there's so many fish in that lake. And that lake was born in May of 1980 when I was trying to figure out what was going on. And God was doing all that creating. And I believe that God is creating within you and within me and within the church. And we just got to look for it. And when we look for it, it's going to be there. There's all kinds of opportunities around us. And All right, John, we, slow down, slow down. We, we just got to look for it, and I'm I want, done now. I want you to now, come back. You know, now you, I'm done. You, you got to deliver that sermon when you come back. You let, know, let me I, tell you, this, that is, I know you shared that story. That is a powerful, <laughs> powerful story. Yeah. And, and listen, that is a great primer for that. You know, um, John has a, such an incredible trust testimony. He will be ministering at CCC Long Island. You'll see him uh, ministering there on a Sunday. We're back, and we're we're looking forward to that as well. I look forward to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's full of power, man. And <laughs> so I'm gonna unmute everyone because uh, I want to just quickly share with you guys before before we wrap up. And pass it, Don, if you can get just get ready to pray us out. Uh, I just want to share the ICB website on YouTube. <coughs> I mentioned it earlier, but this is our ICB YouTube page. Hold on. Here it is. And as you can see, brothers, we have a number of videos here. We have the we have a couple of man cave meetings in there. Minister Paul shared. We got Dr. Norio all throughout here. You want to know what ICB is about? You can click on the what is ICB and hear a great overview. We come over to our library here. And we got all kinds of stuff in here. It's actually not necessarily what I'm looking for, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, videos. Here it is. Here we go there. We got Here the in our library. Here it is. These are uh, quite a few videos and goes way back to when we did different things. Remember a health fair? We used to do the health fair. You can check out a lot of different messages. This is dope. Here, my man Mac Fuller drop a freestyle run at one of our ICB retreats. You know, that was hot. Etc. So there, the bottom line is that there is, oh, we had um, Michael Jr. at one of our retreats. He was hilarious. The short point that I was trying to make was go to the website, go to YouTube, check out some of our information there. Don't forget to subscribe, of course, and stay connected. Most of these meetings that we're having are going to be recorded, so you guys can go back to them later. If you wanted notes, if you want to hear something that, that was said, not your private, not the conversations that we're having where brothers are sharing their hearts. That information is edited out because that's just reserved for us here live and in the flesh, kind of, through technology. <laughs> Amen. Um, I want to welcome a number of you brothers. Galaxy 99, who are you, bro? Yeah, I, I don't know your name. It just says Galaxy S9. <laughs> What up, Patrick? What's me? Patrick, what's up, bro? You so you got my email? Yeah, I got it. Thanks so much, man. I, I, I thank you for the collection. I'm in there. Hey, man. Hey, man. So welcome, welcome aboard, Pat. Um, also, who haven't we greeted yet? Jesus. Well, it, who's here for the first time? Say your name, Winston. I see you, bro. Godfrey. <laughs> Godfrey. Yo. <Yeah. Hello. laughs> Man, welcome, brother. Godfrey is a long-time ICB guy, man. So glad you can join us. Hopefully, you'll join us next week. We meet here, and here's the deal, right? On Monday, this is our like our kickoff man cave meeting. We have a general meeting. We have a speaker. And then during the week, the, 
the group, small groups meet separately. So if you're new to ICB, you want to get into our manhood studies group. And we're going to plug you into that small group. If you are an ICB regular, then you're going to be part of that rediscover group that our Simon was talking about. And we'll reach out to you about that. And those groups meet separately during the week. Those groups have their own prayer call, prayer, uh, prayer cord. And, and the, but we come here to get our message, our inspiration, word of encouragement, a message from the Lord, and then we go on to our separate meetings. And there will be a meeting right after this one where one of our small groups will be meeting separately as well. So brothers, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Bobby Yo, we look forward to seeing you next week, man. Uh, looking forward to it. Listen, I'm excited about that. And John, we got to get you on the calendar, man. Find out what date you're going to come back and, and share with us. And we're going to have many other guests uh, who will be speaking here tonight. And Simon, 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 Simon. Man. I don't know how you did it, bro. After they try to beat you up today, you still delivered that message from the Lord. Uh, and you even shouted out Larry in the process. Only you can do that. <laughs> After tonight, I'm going to be humble and respectful to Simon because he, he impressed me tonight. So, Simon, praise the Lord. Oh, and by Amen. the way, John, John Craig, Larry is a mentor with Long Island Youth Mentoring, man, if you didn't know. But I'm sure you know everything about Long Island Youth Mentoring. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah John and I have met a couple of times, yes. Yeah, yeah. Nice. All right. So, gentlemen, we are wrapping up our call. Baron, what up, man? Am I giving you a headache, brother? I need to turn my mic up. No, that was my, no, my mic. Sorry. What's up, Rod? How are you, bro? What up, man? All right. So, as we close out, whoever's eating their bag of chips, that sounds cool. All right. We'll have, uh, you know, I know dinner is being served. That's all right. Uh, hey, Sil, what's up, man? Hey, you excited, bro? Listen, bro, man, we, we you know, get, get waiting on you, man, just knowing that God is using you, man. And and Sil is our in-house praise and worship leader for Long Island Man Cave, man. Amen. 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 He, he delivers for us, man. We've been we've been subbing him out. You know, he's been he's been on his on the on the mend. But you know, we look forward to uh you returning, man. Uh, thanks, man. Looking forward to being with you guys again. Amen. Well, um, Amen. My wife and I are getting over stuff, so okay. I'm getting kind of under the but um look forward to seeing you guys again soon. All right. Amen. 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 Oh, no worries, Sil, man. I've been singing, man. I've been working on my singing <laughs> lessons, <bro. laughs> We had two hundred people oh, on here before I started singing. We dropped down uh, to like fifty, so I stopped. Oh uh, it's a new season. <laughs> yeah. new Amen. Day. Look at that. Fresh anointing <laughs> is coming our way. Amen, amen, amen. amen. This season of power and prosperity. Mm -hmm. It's a new season. Thank you, God. Coming to be. Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, this is yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, y'all like the way yeah. I sound? You see how I threw my yeah, voice right. like that? <laughs> right, right, right. You know? Joyful noise. That was fantastic, Sil. So, you know, we, we, we got to get you on a, on a you know, rotation. Now, I just don't want Happy coming looking for me. That's all. <laughs> you know? No problem, man. <laughs> Well, she's right. our biggest, our biggest supporter. So she'll kick me out there in a second. Oh, you gotta say the word. You, you know what? You know she is. You know she is. Um, any question before we before we go into prayer with Pastor Don? So, Ron, I just have one question. So, uh, in terms of registering, I got two different emails today. So, in the future, yeah, that was, was my fault. Confusing. Okay. Yeah, I was drinking too much coffee, brother. I'm sorry. <laughs> Too much coffee. I got to figure out a better way to do that. I mm. think technically uh, that if you click any link that I've sent to you previously on the day that we're meeting, you should be able to get it. Right. It, so what so happened was I got an email from you that actually was for Ron Manning. I forwarded to Ron. I was surprised it, it came to me and saying register. So I was a little no, confused. Ron was harassing me earlier. Oh, about yeah. 
you know, not getting an email, and he started texting I'm gonna me. Harass you in a minute. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, no. So I'm not I just, done yet. I just, I just sent it to everybody. <laughs> I was reporting on Ron. Let him know that you know everybody's gonna. Uh-huh. All right, so gentlemen, we're gonna pray. Here's the deal. This is what we typically do. The meeting is essentially over. Uh, Pastor Don is gonna pray us out, but. You know, if you ever been to an ICV meeting, a men's huddle, guys just don't know when to go home, right? <laughs> so, so they hang out. They stay. They stay until the pastor's like, "Come on, you, you we turn the lights out, flickering them." So we we still do that, right? <laughs> once, once Pastor Don <laughs> prays us out, I'm staying on. You know, if you guys want to hang out, you're more than welcome to hang out. We're just gonna kick it, and and feel free to to hang out. Amen. Amen. Hey Rodney, one question. Um, you said you posted the notes from Simon's. Um, yes. It's it, where where, do, I find, where do I find those notes? Where you got to hit the notes? chat box. Chat box. On your it says more. And then more. I hit up. that before, so what is it? Oh, so what do I hit? The chat. It's I'm a, in chat. A, a says, window should pop up. Where? It, and who is that, Daryl? Yes. All right, Daryl. Well, why don't you stay on after we pray out? All and right. I'll show you where it's at. And I'll email it to right. you as well. All right. Because I'm and in the no, chat box now. I don't see it. Okay. No problem. All right. Another so quick I'm, question. Um, another quick question. Is it going to be the same meeting uh, The meeting number? Is, is the meeting number always going to be the same for every week? It's not supposed to be technically, Brother Sam, you know, but it should be. It, you know, I think I've found that if you hit the old meeting number, it brings up the new date and, you know, you, you're able to get in. So, okay. um but we got you on. You should you should get an email. How did you get an okay. email, by the way? Um, Danny it? sent it to me. James? No, Danny. 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 Oh, Danny. Yeah. So, Danny, make sure you give his information to, to Simon, all right? Or, you know, so we can stay in contact with you. Okay. Got it. Nice. And welcome, Sam. Glad you glad you showed. Next week, yeah. muscle shirt. Muscle shirt. Everybody. <laughs> Next sure week. Mondays. Sure Monday. Mondays. Monday. That's, That's, right. That's right. That's right. Everybody knows Sam. You checking in with the I see that thing. I see it. Show me those guns, son. Show me those guns. All right. You guys, you see what I mean? This is why, Sherman, this is why it's hard for us to get off this car, man. Brother, <laughs> starting up, man. You're most responsible for that. Exactly. That's, that's, that's a rumor. That's a rumor, brother. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to mute everybody but Pastor Don. And hold on. Then I'll unmute you guys so we can all worship the Lord together. Yeah. Pastor, it's on you, sir. All right. God bless you, gentlemen. God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this new season. Yes, Lord. We thank you for this new day. Yes, Lord. We thank you that a fresh anointing is pouring our way. And we walk into this, whole Heavenly Father, with our ears open, our hearts humble, ready to be led, ready to be guided, ready to be prepared for what you have prepared for us. And Father, we thank you, Heavenly Father, that you're teaching us to be the overcomers you have designed for us to be. And as we are these overcomers that you are in the process of making, continue, O oh Heavenly Father, to let us be sensitive to the needs of others, be sensitive to our need for you. Let us not, O oh Heavenly Father, take on the burden, but let us become a part of the solution to these burdens in Jesus' name. And Lord, we use your strength, your word, your might, your power, your overcoming nature, being like Jesus, to lead us, guide us, and let us walk together in love. Let us walk together in unity. Let's walk together in hope and be the light shining on top of the hill that all the world may see true Christianity at its finest moment in the midst of the storm. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for not only creating, leading, and guiding us through it, but making us stronger because of it. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.
Pastor Don? Yes, sir. All right. The ICB Creed is on you, sir. Putting you we on are. the spot. <laughs> By yourself. <laughs> All right. Here we are. <laughs> we are the men of ICB, chosen before the foundation of the world and commissioned to uphold God's standard for manhood as set forth by his son, Jesus Christ. Enlightened by his word, empowered by his Holy Spirit. We seek to dwell peacefully with all men as we, sword in one hand, travel in the other, reclaim territory for the kingdom of God. Amen. Who are we? ICB. I I Who are we? ICB. I Who are we? ICB. I oh. I oh. I oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, that 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 is the funniest thing. Sad hey, Simon, you're unmuted. That is the funniest thing ever, man. All right, the uh, gentlemen. Uh, the meeting's officially over. If you have to leave, thank you for coming. Next week, same time, 7 p.m., uh, we're now going to get into our uh, ICB post.